Hi, it's Ronick from Ask Audio, and I'm here with Andy from Akai. That's right. How are you doing, man? I'm doing very well, doing very well. Cool. Uh, I think you probably know what we're going to be watching, probably because you've been looking at the title of the video. We'll hide them. <laughs> it is, of course, the uh, Akai MPC Live, and then we'll be looking at the Akai MPC X as well, which is down here. But let's start with the MPC Live now. It is, um, it's fair to say that <laughs> it's garnered a lot of attention over the internet. Yeah, it's uh, definitely over caught the public's years. attention, without a doubt. And, and I think because it, it's come at the right time to bring functionality back to all the producer community, to people who want to do live performance, because I think so much, of, so many people now want to try and do stuff more live as well. But they also want to have, they, want, they don't want to be tied to the computer as much. So this gives you the, it's so versatile that you can take this wherever you want. It has, um, it's battery powered as well. So with a full charge, you get five, six hours. It takes about half an hour to 40 minutes to recharge as well. It's got you know, six, six outputs. You've got two MIDI USBs that you can use to drive keyboards, bring in sounds. You've got a SATA connection for a two gigabyte, two terabyte hard drive, 16 gig SSD on board with like 10 gig of sounds from Capson Pro Audio, Loop Masters, MVP Loops, sample tools. You know, we've really pushed the boat out to give everyone like all the content that they require, bringing all their own stuff, but bringing it up to date with some of the most compelling features that really have attracted so many new users and different genres, putting MPC across all categories now. And one of the big things, of course, is the fact that it's standalone yeah. if you want it to be, right? Yeah, that's exactly it. So you've got the best of both worlds. You can go standalone mode or you can go straight to control mode, straight into 2.0 of MPC software, and then utilize that as a standalone application on the laptop or as a plugin inside Ableton, etc. And then MPC software, excuse me, for the jet lag, but I believe uh, that gives you the ability to kind of launch uh, audio clips as well now? Well, the, the software, which is 2.0, is running inside this as well. So it's not just a condensed version down, it's running the full application. So the, you, you have clip launching, you have audio tracks, you have real-time time stretching all on board the MPC, which is also inside the software version as well. So there's nothing that you're losing at all, apart from audio count. You get eight tracks of audio, in standalone mode, if you go to the computer, you end, obviously you get 128 tracks of audio, um, and then you can also access your VST instruments and effects, which is another section we'll talk about with the Q-Link controls on X. Yeah. So in a, in an ess in, in essence, you could, you know, temporarily at least, or, or for or for some of your project, uh, you know, ignore your DAW and just kind of work on the on the MPC line. It is, yeah. You know, you you can do so much of your project. <laughs> technically the entire project if you need to, directly on the hardware without even ever touching the computer. But plus also you can, you can work on a live set and take that straight to the stage. You can integrate into a DJ set as well. You know, we've been, we've got people like MJ Cole on board now, DJ Fresh, all people that are in the electronic community that are working with us with these products because of all these features. But you know, the fact that you, you time stretch vocals and bring in acapellas, um, base it around your beat because I always look at these as the, the foundation of your track. It gets the track going, it gives you the idea and then you build up on that idea and at some point you might want to take that into the computer or you just want to finish the project entirely in the, you know, inside the MPC but it's really up to the user but we give you all the tools to do that. Brilliant. Awesome, okay. Well, you know what I'm going to ask you next? I want to, I want, I want to see this baby in action. Uh, yeah, you certainly can. So, um, what I'm going to do I've got a vocal here, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna mute the audio for a second, and we're just gonna go back to our MIDI mode, and we'll program up a beat. We're gonna do we're gonna set the duration to be 16 beats. Okay, you'll see as well the screen is so responsive. So here we go. Just program that up. Use note repeat. So you can see how quick that is. So now we can spin in audio, audio tracks. Instruments live. Right. Baby, 
Check this out now, right? So. Time stretch. Clip launch. So you can see from, I'm just doing all that fluent, jump in between, your classic drum mode, jumping into clip launching, audio tracks, using the time stretch in to take you from this tempo up to that tempo. So I think people will see how versatile the MPC is and all the functionalities that they can do. When you go to clip launching, jump into there, we can see the clip, we can go to start and end points, I can reverse a clip, I can look at the entire program, we can look at the quantization of how it launches as well, which is super, super cool. Uh, well, one quick question. Uh, so you're obviously doing a lot of the controls on the touch screen, yeah. utilizing them there, but you've got uh, uh, these rotary controls as well. So can, can, you, can you assign uh, different functions to yeah. these? So you go into Q-Link Edit, and now we can set up different types of program controls for the MPC, pad scenes, so we can set up our own scenes of our favorite parameters that will always be there. We can go to pad parameters, and now we can access all of the key commands that I want to address. So if I want volume pan in send returns, I don't have to compromise one of the queue links for that one command. It will literally go, okay, you want to do volumes across all pads. Or I can just jump back to my favorites, and now all my pads will have tune in, attack, decay, whatever. Or I use the commands that I've set on my program. And the same on my project. So it's really customizable, especially for you know guys who like tweaking their drums, people using it live. They've got all their go-to settings. So that's that covered. Obviously, you've got the step sequencer as well, fly through, do velocities on hi-hats, all that kind of stuff as well. Very easy to do. Um, it's just, again, it's a really fluent workflow. It does look extremely quick. Uh, yeah, it is really, really quick. And then if we jump to the X really, really quickly, what we were talking about with the Q-Links here, obviously this has the OLED, so you've got the digital scribble scripts that will give you instant feedback of everything that's going on. So as I jump through my parameters, you'll see that these will update wherever I'm going around the X. If I hold Shift, I can now customize all of these like we were doing on the live. So that's really useful. But if you go into control mode, you can now access all your, your plugins if you're, if you're working inside the box. And then this will update in real time. So if you're using EQs or compressors, you'll see all the threshold release attack, everything on here. Using, I was using it with some fab filter stuff, which I've, I think I've said on like six videos now, but excuse me, some of the stuff will be repeated. Um, and again, you can really get into doing the EQ curves, filtering high pass, low pass. Um, and that's, that's really nice because it comes like a real instrument and a, and a control hub at the same time. Um, so it really gives you the vers versatility to either have it as a central hub, standalone, and really focus on your production. Um, and then when you want to utilize a computer without all the distractions that come with it, you can just go into control mode. Do you, um, do you foresee any, anybody wanting to use the X uh, in, a, in a live performance setting? Oh, God, yeah. It's funny because um, we did a lot of work with Jamie Jones and Hot Natured. They were using the Renaissance on stage. So this is, you know, some people want the bigger, MPC because of the screen layout. So you've got all the same functionality um, that the live has. So it really, it just depends on the user. This one for me is really portable. I love the live personally for me because I'm always traveling all the time. And you know, I think the, 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 the X is definitely something that's going to stay in the studio for me. That's just going to be there all the time. So I would, I would, for me, I would use the live all the time, traveling, keep the X in the studio if you want to buy both. You know, it's really down to the user. But there, there's, but you can also see reasons why people would want both because of the functionality. They, they serve a different purpose. And, you know, silly question maybe, but uh, I guess if you've got both, uh, is it easy enough to, to kind of transfer settings and, uh, and uh, projects from one um, to the other? One other thing that's really important, yeah, you've got eight CV gate outputs on the back of this as well. So again, this started to attract a whole new community as soon as they found out about that. Because the, I think online, the leak, which is telling you a few things, but it was kind of funny for me because I knew what the specs were. And I was like, once people start realizing what these can do, 
that's where it's all going to fall into place. And the CV gate stuff has just sparked a new community for us of people that are using a lot of modular gear that can now in, use the, the, the sequence facilities that are in the X and, um, to really enhance all of their production. Because a lot of people I've been chatting to, they don't really have a centralized sequencer that can efficiently use all that stuff, you know, and utilize all of their racks. So that's really, really cool to have that functionality. Um, and again, then you can combine it with all the other feature sets that we've added, with all the time stretching, etc. You can resample back in. If you want to bring your modular gear back in through the inputs, resample it, bring it back as an audio track, you can do that as well. That's really, really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of mind boggling in terms of what you could achieve with it. Yeah, you know, I, I've been an MPC user for a long mm. time. And for me, this is kind of like the pinnacle of product. It covers so much genres, so much technology, and it's all doing it without the need of the computer. Because I, you know, even I feel sometimes when you're in the land of the computer, you, you've got so much at your control, thousands and thousands of sounds, thousands of, you know, of plugins, and sometimes you find that as a distraction. When you go back to the basics of this is what I need, but blend it in with all the, the key features that we're all using, it just becomes like a workhorse, it really does. Yeah, so. so it's kind of like bringing the best of the computer, best of the touch screen, yeah. and tactile controls, yeah. and a dedicated workstation that you can kind of focus on and yeah. make music, right? And it's funny, like even with the community, so many people that used to use MPC are thrilled that it's bringing back the functionality of standalone, but with all the modern features. And that's why I think the community is so excited about it. And a lot of these music producers that started off on MPC, they kind of slid into the box and now like, ah, oh, now coming back. coming back because now I've got the best of both worlds. Um, and that was the, I think we was, I was with MJ Cole and he was just talking about when he made Sincere and all that stuff and he was using MPC. But when he saw this, it was like, oh, wow. Now I can get the feel back the swing back, but with all the functionalities of what you're doing with all the time stretching, but also I can bring it into logic when I'm ready if I want to do so. So yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome at the moment for us, so yeah. Okay, cool. I'm going to test your memory, man. Um, okay, uh, availability and pricing, let's go with Okay, that. so we are 799 pounds. Oh, 799 pounds, because we're both British, yeah. but uh, so in dollars, do we know what that is? I think we are 11 dollars 11, yeah, I think it's about right. Yeah, it's about 11 dollars So, and again, when you, when you look at the market, what's out there, you are getting an incredible product for the price point. It really is, when you break down all the different components, that it's, uh, it's got an interface, it's got time stretching, clip launching, controller, standalone, all these things with all this screen technology um, for that kind of price point. And then in the UK, this is going to be, I think it's 1449 for the X. So over here, it's about 2199. I'll, I'll double check and put the prices into the article, I think. So yeah, so exciting times. Um, yeah, availability between March and April for both units. So. Okay, cool. check out a review on Ask Audio as soon as we can get our hands on one. We might even swipe one of these. I think this is going to be that's easier. Mine, is yours moment. really, really well, yours? I, I, I've got both. I've got both in the UK, so maybe I'll come down and <laughs> okay. we'll do a video. That sounds cool, man. Yeah, All right, thanks a lot, man. Cool. All right, so. No problem. Cheers.